The Super Friends are at the Hall of Justice League for their weekly meeting, but nothing is happening in the world that shouldn't be happening, so they're bored. Holy rolling cue ball, Batman! That's an amazing feat! Not so amazing, Robin. After all, there were only 15 balls on the pool table. 16, that is. You also sank the cue ball, which means the shot doesn't count. Marvin is looking for help with his homework, but he won't find it here. Wendy is volunteering at the library. They say, go there. Uh, I'm a rock collector, and I would like to find some books on the subject. Hmm. Well, we have a book on that subject, but it's out just now. Photosynthesis. F, F. F-O-T-O... Photosynthesis is spelled with a P, young man, not an F. So that's why I can't find it. Now, the homework sheet he was looking at asked what is photosynthesis, and he pronounced it correctly, so the spelling is right there in front of him. Sometimes I think Marvin is a lot smarter than he appears to be. Other times I'm not so sure. <laughs> Remember, you're in a library. <sighs> the thing about sneezing is, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. The best thing to do is bury your face in the crook of your elbow. Then again, since he's a dog, he can bury his face anywhere he wants to. Holy bibliography, all the encyclopedias were gone. Disappeared. Completely. Right after Wonder Dog sneezed. Marvin? Well, somebody must have been eating almonds, and Wonder Dog is, like, allergic. Marvin, please. Marvin thinks it might be significant, but nobody cares. Superman says we can leave it to the police. Just then, one of their other communication stations goes off. We're getting a CDQ from the SDI. CDQ from the SDI? Yes, the SF gang will have to forego the R&R &R because they need you at the DOD PDQ. A high priority communication from the Secret Department of Investigation. The Secret Department of Investigation? I just said that. You just said that? The government has received a phoned in threat. They taped it. Professor Baffles gives warning. The collection of lithographs lent for exhibition by the French government to the American National Museum will be stolen tonight at 8 o'clock. And if you doubt my ability to carry out my plan, check with the Central Library and ask what happened to all their encyclopedias. Challenge accepted. There are guards at every door and window. Aquaman is patrolling the river that runs past the museum. Wonder Woman is covering the air in her transparent plane, while Batman and Robin are watching the streets. Robin, that sign says keep off the grass. Careless of me, Batman. How silly of me not to stay in front of the car to protect the grass. Inside, mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent is interviewing a museum employee. And those are the lithographs lent by the French government? Yes, the five on that wall. I only see three, but maybe he's including Marvin and Wendy. <laughs> Do something, Mark. Wonder Dog, stop sneezing. <laughs> They did it! They stole the lithographs! And Wonder Dog couldn't stop sneezing. You don't suppose there's a connection? Maybe he had to inhale so hard he sucked him right off the wall. Check his stomach. <laughs> if you don't stop Wonder Dog sneezing, Marvin, nobody will be able to hear the sirens. Well, he can't stop. Not as long as that smell of almonds is in the air. <laughs> almonds! Why would the place suddenly smell like almonds? They're back at headquarters to sort this out. Robin, at the museum, Wonder Dog was... The less said about Wonder Dog at the museum, the better for everybody, especially Wonder Dog. But he smelled almonds there and at the library. We'll talk about it a little later, kids. Robin the boy Wonder is calling them kids. Talk to one of the others, Wendy. Our Washington man has a letter from Professor Baffles. Gentlemen, I have proved my powers at the library. I have proved my powers at the museum. I have proved that it is futile to resist any demands that I make. So, obviously, he's about to make an outlandish demand. A $5 million shipment of new paper money is being shipped to Hawaii by the U.S. Mint. 
I will appropriate that $5 million unless... Ah, unless what? Unless $1 million in gold is deposited to the credit of Professor Baffles in a numbered account in a Swiss bank. He'll steal $5 million unless they give him $1 million. The money's journey begins with an armored car that will take it to the pier. It'll be transferred to a waiting ship which will carry it to Hawaii. Why don't they send it by plane? Because then Aquaman wouldn't have anything to do. The armored car takes this road to the harbor. We'll follow it to this tunnel. And we pick up the pieces. Rudy, check the boys. 6-2 to 4-5. 6-2 to 4-5. Come in. Over. 6-2 to 4-5. Come in. 4-5 oh, to 6-2. Go ahead. How's it coming? We're all set here. These guys have nothing to do with Professor Baffles. They're your basic armored car robbers. The five of them stand to net a million apiece. <laughs> Wonder Woman to Batman. Go ahead, Wonder Woman. There's some suspicious activity in the Wadsworth Tunnel. Right, we'll investigate. But those guys have no idea what they're up against. They park the bulldozer in the tunnel and take off. Where'd that car come from? Arnie and Harv will block the tunnel. We'll come up behind them and surprise. We own five million dollars, Rudy. <laughs> I think Superman is laughing at them. The armored car just entered the tunnel. It's Batman! How on earth did you recognize me? Your beautiful eyes are unforgettable. Now let's go into the tunnel and see what you chaps have been up to. We can't do that, Batman. Why not? That armored car will come barreling through here any second. We better get out of here. Hold on. Let him go, Robin. The whole idea of the dozer is so the armored car doesn't come barreling through, so I have a feeling he may be lying. Batman and Robin find the tractor in the tunnel. They know what to do. Yeah, Robin can hop on it and back it out of there. Or they can do that. The armored car rolls along without incident, followed by our would-be robbers and Superman. Hey, that tractor isn't supposed to be there! And you're not supposed to be here! Hey, I was gonna say that. He delivers them to some nearby police and the rest of the trip is mundane. The money is on the ship and it's double locked in a reinforced room. <laughs> Mr. Mergen. Mr. Who? That nice man we met in the library. Mr. Mergen! Mr. Mergen! Hello, Mr. Mergen. Taking a trip? Yes, I'm on sabbatical and I thought Hawaii would be a good place to start my vacation. <laughs> he picked a strange way to get there. This is a cargo ship. And he really should stop wearing that almond-scented cologne. That's why I was so glad to see you. So I could tell you I saw a Brazilian agate yesterday. A Brazilian agate. Yes, a lovely bird, the Brazilian agate. Well, young lady, I must get to my cabin. It was nice seeing you again. Goodbye. I can't blame her for being confused. Even if the Brazilian part throws you off, an agate is a rock. In the library, he said he was a rock collector. Who confuses a rock for a bird? Well, I guess there's nothing for us to do. There's one thing to do. Make sure that money is in the strong room. Guess what? It's not. I think we all saw that coming. Nothing there. Nothing? The money is gone. I suggest we investigate. You are the master of the obvious. But Mr. Mergen's such a sweet guy. How can he turn sour? How can Mr. Mergen, who claims he's a rock expert, say a Brazilian agate is a lovely bird? Maybe because he's a phony? He only pretended to be a rock collector when he really collects birds? It's not lovely? Not only is it not lovely, it's not a bird. It's a rock! Speaking of Brazilian agates, there goes Mr. Mergen. He said he was going to his cabin, but he's leaving the ship. I sure hope you know what you're doing, Wendy. He hops into a big panel truck of some kind. They stow away in the back and he takes off. 
Wendy is starting to see the connection between Mr. Mergen, the thefts, and Wonder Dog's allergy. Back on the ship... Am I mistaken, or do I detect the odor of almonds? You definitely are not mistaken. Holy nosebuds! Wendy and Marvin mentioned almonds. Pertaining to what, Robin? The museum robbery and the disappearance of the books at the library. In each case, the kids said they smelled almonds. And you told them to shut up. Remember that part? How did Professor Baffle steal the money? He didn't steal it. But it's gone. Yes. But first, let's think of the demand Professor Baffle's made of the government. Of course, Superman. I see the direction of your reasoning. You do? Professor Baffles demanded one million dollars, otherwise he would make five million disappear, right? Right. It took them long enough. He disintegrated it, and the lithographs, and the encyclopedias. And it's obvious now that Mr. Mergen is Professor Baffles. He has some kind of chemical formula that will disintegrate paper and who knows what else. It also made short work of the leather bags the money was in. Mr. Darby, Mr. Dabney, what are you... Shh, shh, quiet. Where did those young people come from? Mm, the back of your truck, Professor Baffles. Well, send them away. We can't do that, Professor, or all your good works will go down the drain. They'll be locked in a room while the Professor does whatever it is that he does. He wants five million dollars this time. And if he doesn't get it? Then he'll take action against the New York Public Library first, then the Boston Music Library, and so on until the money is paid. He seems to have a mad on for libraries. That gets him on my bad side real quick. My kids practically grew up in the library, and I've worked in four libraries myself. He is a naughty man. Has anybody seen Wendy? And Marvin. I'm always stumbling over Marvin, but not lately. Robin? Why don't you see if you can find them? You can start looking not here. Mr. Dabney. Yes, Professor. This door is locked. So the kids won't disturb you while you make some more of your formula. I won't make any more formula unless you open this door. You'll do as you're... Open the door for the Professor, Darby. We don't want the ice cream to melt before the kids get it. Okay, if he's into ice cream, I may be willing to hear him out. Why is he doing these things? For the good of humanity. Destroying books and art is for the good of humanity? Exactly. When man first appeared on this earth, he was pure and good. He knows this how? Superman and Aquaman and Batman and Wonder Woman are pure and good. But not Robin. He's impure and ungood. Agreed, but nobody else. And you know why? Why? Through example. Man became what he has become through the bad example set him by history. Like I don't know what he's talking about, Wonder Dog. Man has become corrupt and treacherous and belligerent and crime prone. I say it's the fault of history. And you're going to wipe out that history by destroying all the books and paintings and music? Exactly. One. By 1977, digitizing had begun, not to mention the existence of books on tape and other media, and he's not going to have access to all of it, so it's a futile mission to begin with. Two, you know what I'm going to ask next. Who appointed him to decide this without checking with the rest of us? For one thing, when he appeared on the ship, I thought he was the waiter or the maitre d' calling them to dinner. So why is he demanding money? Mr. Dabney and Mr. Darby pointed out to me that we were running short of funds to continue my campaign. Well, if you ask me, Mr. Darby and Mr. Dabney are a couple of crooks. <laughs> Lucky for everybody, they got stuck in the door so they were able to escape. Oh, professor, we've wasted enough time. Uh, Mr. Dabney. Will you explain to these young people that you want that money for me? Come on, Dabney, lay it on the line. Well, Professor, we figure one hand washes the other. What Dabney means is that since we helped you do what you wanted, it's only fair that you should help us get what we want. Which is one million dollars. One million dollars. Suddenly, the Professor realizes he's been duped, but our bad boys have a problem. We only have two test tubes of the solution left, Professor. If the solution makes things disappear, Professor, how come it doesn't make the test tubes disappear? 
Glass is one substance that is immune to my solution. That's nice, but Darby and Dabney have lots of glass and very little solution to put in it. They want him to hurry up and make more. I absolutely refuse to have anything further to do with you two gentlemen. That's telling him, Professor. What? If you know what's good for you, Mr. Dabney and Mr. Darby, you'll let us out of here before our super friends find out about this. They don't seem to be concerned. They say, first, we already have a plan in motion to take care of them. Second, there's no way for them to know where you are. Like how wrong can you be? Wonder Dog, the window. Huh? Get the super friends, go. <laughs> Ay, yay, yay. Now they're chasing him back and forth across the room. Duck, Wonder Dog! One vial gone, one left. I wonder if the super genius realizes what he just did. <laughs> And now he has no vials. Almonds, Wendy! Smell the almonds? <laughs> then again, I could be having trouble counting to two. It's happened before. Go, Wonder Dog! Huh? Like the road to the window is wide open! Even better, the window is open this time. Wonder Dog. Where's Wendy? And Marvin. He has to pantomime the situation as best he can, so he starts sneezing. Robin, didn't you mention that Wendy and Marvin said they smelled almonds at the scene of each crime? And by the way, aren't you supposed to be out looking for them? Wonder Dog will finish his story and lead them back to Murder's factory. Warehouse. Whatever it is. But there's nobody there. They moved Wendy and Marvin to that ever-popular abandoned amusement park. Why do you suppose our three friends are inside that ticket booth? Well, maybe they're trying to sell some tickets. <laughs> but to who? <laughs> Grammar, boys. That should be to whom. Marvin will try to break through the door. <laughs> On the other hand, maybe we should think of something else. I have an idea. Diggy, diggy horn, diggy, diggy horn. Wendy and Marvin, you are no doubt looking to find. Then hunt in these places that are four of a kind. Under the sea, off the coast of Spain, or in a balloon floating free in the rain, or perhaps in the Andes, on some remote peak. Or think instead, super friends, of some dark cave of which no one will speak. As you expect, each one is a trap set especially for each super friend. Those are steel cables. I guess they're supposed to hold him there until he starves or something. He sends out a call for help, but it's going to take a while for anybody to get there. And in the balloon, something is covered by a blanket. But instead of Wendy and Marvin, he finds kryptonite. That's what happens when you don't use your x-ray vision first. He's almost unconscious. As Wonder Woman looks up at the flickering light at the top of the shaft, she realizes there is no way she can climb out. Can't she use her magic lasso to catch something way up there and pull herself out? She doesn't think so. 
Holy hobgoblins! It's dark in here, Batman. Instead of calling upon hobgoblins, Robin, call upon your bat light. Of course, Batman. When you've hit what's obviously a trip wire, you gently back your foot up and lift it out so you don't set off the trap. Are you all right, Robin? I just tripped over a wire. Or you can do like Robin and just yank on it. He's having an interesting day. Beware of wires where wires shouldn't be. You suspect something, Batman. This is no time to figure it out. Let's get out of here. Or not. How many bat bombs did you bring with you? And why did you leave them in the car? I could kick myself for being so naive. I've been trusting Dabney and Darby. The super friends will find us, Mr. Mergen. We wouldn't have to depend on the super friends if we had any of Mr. Mergen's chemical solution. We wouldn't. A little of that solution poured on this wall. I just happened to have a small vial of that solution in my pocket. He didn't realize that his disintegrating stuff can disintegrate part of the booth and get them out of there? Who dresses this guy in the morning? Well, that's what I call a super groovy disappearing wall. Like maybe Darby and Dabney won't appreciate us busting up their ticket booth. Yes, it might be wise if we left. Quickly. You saw that correctly. They had to have a round table discussion before they could decide to run away. Monkey tent. Quick, inside. Welcome home, Professor. Come on in, Darby. We're having a reunion. That won't do them much good. All our crew has to do is use a little more of the formula on the bars and they're loose again. <laughs> they're not as attractive as the last monkeys we had in the cage. <laughs> he doesn't think Wendy is attractive. I suspect she was drawn specifically to make prepubescent boys wish puberty would hurry up. If those big blue eyes with no pupils didn't mesmerize you when you were that age, your mind may have been wandering. I was 24, so the images didn't have that effect on me, but I can sure appreciate the careful artwork and style, the way she's drawn to be an absolute knockout without being provocative. Again, she's the pretty girl that little boys can't stop thinking about, even though there's a good chance they don't know why. Aquaman, pinned under the submarine and immobilized by the steel cables that enmesh him, has given up hope that the telepathic messages he had sent had reached any of his marine friends. But now, he picks up the song of a sperm whale as it races toward him. And two moray eels inform him they are on their way. Sorry they're late, the traffic was unbelievable. The whale lifts the sub and gets him out from under it, the eels undo the cables, and he's free. He seriously considered putting himself back there when he saw what they wanted to charge him for a few seconds' work. As the kryptonite is tossed out of the balloon, its potent effect on Superman is diminished. And when it falls far enough away, it loses all effect and Superman regains consciousness. Since his clue was a trap, he has to assume the others were too. Wonder Woman first. No, I don't know why he didn't just fly down there and lift her out instead of killing a tree. Batman and Robin next. Wonder Woman will check on Aquaman. Hey, you're double parked. Move your car already. I need to get going. You do go to great lengths to assure privacy, Batman. Well, you know how it is, Superman. If one doesn't get off the beaten path, anyone can drop in. Superman took that personally and started putting the rocks back. <laughs> While they were dealing with all that, a police officer delivered the money to the bad guys. But still, nobody knows where Wendy and Marvin are. I'd like to make them disappear. Marvin, 
Don't let their nastiness make you nasty. Well, I don't mean to hurt them. I just like to see the last of them. You can. They're distracted by the money. Use a little formula on the bars and slip out. Mr. Mergen. Yes, Wendy. The rest of your magic solution. Where is it? It took her long enough to think of that. Get to work on those bars. If I threw it on the fire... The fire would disappear. And the smoke? Hmm. Why would you do that? Use it on the bars. I suppose the smoke would just float on out into the air. That's all I wanted to know. Can I have it, please? Yes, the smoke will dissipate and become nothing, so the idea is pointless. But her theory is that the smoke will travel out in all directions and eventually Wonder Dog will smell it. Just make the bars disappear and you can walk to where Wonder Dog is. Why the convoluted plan that depends on undependable air currents? But you know it's going to work. Wonder Dog is trying to tell us something. Yeah, the same thing he's been telling you all episode. His allergy can guide you to the bad guys. It's too bad you dudes still haven't learned that, so he has to start from scratch every time. With his super senses, now Superman can smell it too. The smoke. They're standing where the money exchange was made, so I guess it makes sense that the hideout isn't too far away. Dabney and Darby are getting ready to leave. Ah. I said Dabney and Darby are getting ready to leave. Uh, folks, they'd really like to leave now. And that's just too bad. Exit one, exit two, exit three, they're out. Let's do this the easy way, shall we, gentlemen? See, you guys can be smart when you really set your minds to it. I still feel that man has made the world a terrible place to live. There may be a lot of things wrong with the world, but there are a lot of wonderful things in it, too. And no one man can make the decision on how to change things. Thank you. How many years have I been saying that? No one person or handful of persons has the right to decide what life is going to be like for the rest of us unless we all, as a collective decision, give them that right. It's never happened in all of human history. But there have been plenty of Professor Baffleses who think they know way better than the rest of us and they're going to share their way with us whether we want it or not. And as solutions to man's problems go, this one was goofy. How many generations did he think it would take to lose all memory of the history we learned? Take away the books and music and people will find a way. IBM had been selling personal computers since 1973 and other companies were cranking out PCs, dedicated word processors. Humanity was already developing ways to spread knowledge digitally. Hypertext, the system that the whole World Wide Web is based on, had been around since 1968. In other words, the genie was already out of the bottle by the time Mr. Murder came up with his idea. I do understand why he called himself what he did, though, because I definitely found the professor baffling. 